Welcome to your Covidence UK study update for May 2022. My name's Adrian Martineau and I'm the Chief Investigator based here at Queen Mary University of London. So those of you who watch these webinars regularly may remember that we previously showed some data looking at the impact of having asthma on people's risk of COVID-19. And in fact, this was work that we did uh, back in 2021, led by Hayley Holt, published in the Thorax Journal. And one of the interesting and unanticipated findings that we had was that people, particularly with allergic asthma, uh, seemed to be at lower risk of getting COVID-19 than those who didn't have allergies. Today, I want to address a separate but related question, which is instead of looking at the impact of asthma on risk of COVID-19, I want to look at the latest study data that we have looking at the impact of COVID-19 on asthma control. And in fact, we're looking at a very specific component of asthma control, which is so-called asthma exacerbations or asthma attacks. And the reason we're interested in those is because they are the major cause of illness and indeed mortality in people who have asthma. Um, they're the major single reason why people with asthma uh, end up in hospital. Um, these asthma attacks were res responsible for four deaths every day in the UK, um, and they're very commonly triggered by respiratory viruses. Now, one of the interesting and unanticipated phenomena that we saw in association with the pandemic was that asthma attacks became much, much less frequent during the periods of lockdown. So let me just share these published data again in the journal Thorax from uh, Gwyn Davis and Aziz Sheikh, um, the EVE2 project uh, based up at Edinburgh and in Swansea. Uh, and this graph shows the weekly count of emergency admissions to hospital for asthma uh, in Scotland on the left and in Wales on the right during 2020. And the red line shows the uh, admissions for 2020 and the blue line shows the average for the five years before 2020. And what you can see both for Scotland and for Wales is that this vertical black line represents the date of lockdown and it's associated with a sharp decline in uh, admissions for asthma, both in Scotland on the left and in Wales on the right. Now, there are several reasons why this might be. One explanation is that because people were uh, having less social mixing, going to each other's houses less, uh, for example, they were less exposed to other respiratory viruses which might have triggered asthma attacks. Another possibility is that because people were going out less, they were less exposed to allergens, things like pollen, etc., which might trigger asthma attacks. Another possibility is that people with asthma were particularly worried that COVID-19 would cause worsening of their illness. And so they were more diligent and careful in using the preventer inhalers than they would have been in a normal year. We also know that uh, the pandemic and the lockdown was a trigger for a lot of people who were smoking cigarettes to stop smoking, and that may also have contributed to improved asthma control. We also know that people were often reluctant to attend hospital during the pandemic unless they absolutely had to in order to minimise their risk of getting COVID-19. And the final possibility, of course, is that COVID-19 might be less likely to trigger asthma attack than other respiratory viruses. Now, since lockdown finished and in the early months of this year, 2022, anecdotally, my uh, clinical colleagues at Bart's Health Trust um, tell me that uh, asthma exacerbations are back on the rise. And so we really want to try and understand a little bit more about why this might be. And we can actually get some really important clues from analysis of the data that you've been sharing with us every month in the Covidence UK study. And we can use that data to answer two questions. The first question we want to ask is, is COVID-19 any more or less likely to trigger an asthma attack than other respiratory infections. On the one hand, one can imagine that it's more likely because obviously it's potentially a very severe respiratory infection in some people. 
On the other hand, we've shown that people with allergic asthma are at lower risk of getting COVID-19. And this is thought to be because they have lower levels of the ACE2 receptor, which is the receptor in the lungs that the SARS-CoV-2 virus binds to. So one could hypothesize in the other direction that COVID-19 might be less likely to trigger an asthma attack. The truth is that nobody is compared head to head COVID-19 against non-COVID acute respiratory infections to see which is more likely to trigger an asthma attack. The second question I want to address today is to ask whether or not the Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2, which emerged in mid-December of last year in the UK, is that variant any more or less likely to trigger an asthma attack than earlier variants? And the reason there's interest in that question is that we know that the Omicron variant tends to affect more the upper airway than the lower airway. And that upper airway involvement is classically a trigger for asthma attacks. So the concern might be that with Omicron becoming the dominant variant in the last in recent months, that could be precipitating more asthma attacks and that might be contributing to the rise in asthma exacerbations that we've seen in recent months. Now, COVID in UK is well placed to answer these two questions for a number of reasons. First of all, this cohort is enriched for people who have asthma. So 15% of COVID UK participants have asthma for which they use at least uh, one inhaler to treat it with. Second of all, our monthly questionnaire captures details not just about incident COVID-19, but also about all respiratory infections. We also capture details of all asthma attacks that people with asthma experience, be they mild, moderate or severe. And we now have accumulated two years of data which spans the pre and post vaccination era and also spans all the variants from Wuhan at the very beginning through Alpha, Delta and most recently Omicron. So who took part in this study or who, who contributed data to this particular analysis I should say? Well uh, there were 2740 uh, of you who have asthma who used at least one inhaler for its treatment and who did not knowingly have COVID-19 prior to sign up to the study. They were eligible for inclusion in this analysis. The average age of people who contributed data to this analysis was 61 years, ranged from 16 years to 88. 73% uh, were women, 27% were men. Uh, just under 95% were of white ethnic origin. 1.7% were of Asian or Asian British ethnic origin. 0.7% of black or black British origin, and 2.8% were of mixed or other ethnic origin. 5.8% of those contributing data to this analysis were currently smoking, and 9.5% of those contributing data to this analysis had had at least one asthma attack requiring treatment with steroids or hospitalization in the 12 months leading up to the period, to the date when they signed up to COVID in UK. So how many events did we see during follow-up? Well, the follow-up for the study was two years, as I say, from May 2020 up to April 2022. So we've included data from your last monthly questionnaire. Overall, during that time, we saw 990 episodes of swab test positive SARS-CoV-2 infection. So that's basically uh, COVID-19 confirmed either with a lateral flow test from a, a nose or throat swab or with an RT-PCR test from a nose and throat swab, or both. During that period, we also saw 3,789 episodes of respiratory infections that weren't COVID-19. And the reason we can be reasonably confident they weren't COVID-19 is because we just looked at infections where, uh, at episodes where somebody had symptoms of a respiratory infection, they swabbed for COVID, but that swab was test negative. For SARS-CoV-2 so we can have a reasonable degree of confidence that these episodes were not down to COVID-19. And during that period as well we saw a total of 482 asthma attacks which we would describe as being moderate or severe and the definition of that that we use is a pretty standard one is that it's an attack that either requires a course of steroid tablets uh, to treat it with uh, or admission to hospital. So the analysis was conducted by uh, one of our team of statisticians, Dr. Florence Tideman, here at Queen Mary. Uh, 
and uh, I won't uh, bore you with the fine detail, uh, but uh, for those of you who are interested, she ran a generalised linear mixed model to identify factors that were associated with increased risk of an asthma attack. And when I say independently associated, what I mean is that these associations were robust to adjustment for a large number of factors that we call confounders. In other words, these are other factors which might relate to one's risk of getting COVID-19 and to one's risk of getting an asthma attack. So we adjust for these factors so that we can just isolate the influence of COVID-19 or other respiratory infection on risk of asthma attack. And those factors, I'll just run through them for you, are age, sex, ethnic origin, socioeconomic status, history of previous asthma attacks, general health status, uh, SARS-CoV-2 vaccination status, and cigarette smoking status. So what did we find? Well, I want to group the risk factors into two groups for the results. First of all, I'm going to talk about host factors. In other words, factors relating to the human host or people's underlying health or immunity. Of course, we looked at age, sex, ethnic origin and vaccination status as potential determinants of asthma exacerbation risk. And we found no association between any of those factors and people's risk of an asthma attack. However, when we looked at people's risk of or history of having had an asthma attack in the 12 months before they signed up to Covidence UK, we found that this was very strongly associated with experiencing another such asthma attack following sign up to the study. In fact, people who had had an asthma attack within a year of signing up to Covidence UK had an 8.9 fold higher odds of having another asthma attack compared to those who didn't have an asthma attack in the year preceding sign up. And that p-value there, p equals less than 0 0.001, basically means that there's a less than a one in a thousand possibility or chance of this result arising as a chance finding. So we can be pretty confident that this uh, association is uh, valid and robust. The other factor relating to people's general underlying health was their self-reported level of general health. You may remember when you signed up to the study, you reported your general health as being excellent, very good, good, fair or poor. And people who reported their general health as being excellent had about sevenfold lower odds of having an asthma attack compared to people who reported their general health as being poor. And again, the p-value for that is less than 0 0.001, so very unlikely to be a chance finding. OK, so at least some of those findings uh, were anticipated. But once we adjust for all of those factors, how does the influence of COVID-19 or other um, respiratory infections influence risk of asthma attack? So these are what I call the viral factors. Well, if you have an acute respiratory infection, so something like a cold or flu or pneumonia or bronchitis, so it's quite a diverse bag of, of different um, entities, but many of them are triggered by viruses. And if you have a negative COVID swab, you have a 5.8 fold higher odds of reporting an asthma attack either in the same month or in the month after that non-COVID acute respiratory infection. So this fits with our understanding of asthma attacks that these are very, very commonly precipitated by uh, acute respiratory infections, usually viral infections. So how does COVID compare to non-COVID acute respiratory infection? So what we did was we split this up into COVID-19 that occurred before mid-December 2021, which was in the pre-Omicron era. And we split up the other section was for uh, COVID that arose after the midpoint of December 2021, when the majority of cases were uh, Omicron. So in the pre-Omicron era, having COVID-19 was associated with 5.7 fold higher odds of having an asthma attack. So the figure is actually remarkably similar to that for non-COVID acute respiratory infection. So the final question is, what about our concerns that Omicron might be a more important trigger of asthma attacks than the earlier variants? Well, I can provide some reassurance on this because what we found when we just looked at COVID that arose after mid-December 2021, i.e. predominantly Omicron, certainly in the uh, more recent months, we saw that this increased odds of asthma attack was still there, around five, 
but it was no higher for Omicron era than it was for the pre-Omicron era, or indeed for non-COVID acute respiratory infection. So the point estimate is a 5.2 fold higher odds of asthma attack. So what's the bottom line here? Well, first of all, we can say that both COVID-19 and non-COVID acute respiratory infections trigger asthma attacks with an increased risk of around about five-fold if you have one of those infections either in the same month as your asthma attack or in the month preceding it. What we can also say is that the risk of asthma attack is very similar following Omicron versus an infection with SARS-CoV-2 in the pre-Omicron era versus an infection that causes acute respiratory infection but is not due to SARS-CoV-2, in other words, with a swab that was negative for SARS-CoV-2. So in conclusion, these findings do not support the idea that the emergence of the Omicron variant is driving recent increases in asthma attacks. And the likelihood is that rather these are arising more frequently as a result of restrictions in social mixing lifting, that people are, are mixing a uh, uh, much more with each other and transmission of non-COVID acute respiratory infections is occurring at a higher rate and may be driving the return, the rise in uh, asthma attacks to levels that we saw in the pre-pandemic era. So that's the end of today's instalment. I want to say a big thank you as always to all of you who are completing, continuing to stick with COVID, COVID UK, completing our monthly questionnaires. Without that contribution, we wouldn't be able to do this work. So I really do appreciate uh, all the efforts you're putting in. Thank you. And also I should acknowledge the critical input of Dr. Florence Tideman, who led on the statistical analysis, and also the critical input of Dr. Paul Pfeffer, who's the uh, lead clinician for severe asthma at Bart Health NHS Trust and a collaborator on the Covidence UK study. Uh, so a uh, big thank you from me and I look forward to catching up with you next month. Goodbye.